affects oligodendrocytes, which are the cells that produce myelin in the body. Myelin is critical for the conduction of the nervous impulse. And they're the cells that are affected in the disease, like multiple sclerosis. There are two ways of thinking about how we might be able to help patients with these sorts of disorders. One is to help the patient's own cells to work better. They're, the brain normally has reparative cells, and we think that there may be some drugs that we can use to help those cells to work better. But there are other cases where a patient may have a repair cell that is fundamentally defective. And then the idea of stem cell therapy or cell replacement comes into our thinking. And one real extreme example of this is a very unfortunate condition called, with an unfortunate name, Elysius Merzbacher disease that nobody can pronounce, or PMD. But it's not a funny disease. It affects boys. It's due to a gene mutation of a gene called PLP1, which is a critical ingredient of myelin. You can't make myelin without it. And it has a profound impact on the neurological fun function of these children. You can see a, a child here who's about four years old who's affected with this disorder. You can see how the legs are sort of just <laughs> hanging. You know, this child can't really move his arms or legs, can never walk or crawl. And these kids will usually die at around five years of age of profound neurological deterioration. The thing is, though, this is a, a disease of one type of cell in the brain. There are oligodendrocytes that are myelinating cells is the de defective cell. Are they mm -hmm. mental? Well, this is a great question. That, mm -hmm. You know, if you look, you can look into their eyes, they look back at you, you can kind of sense a personality there, but they can't vocalize. Parents say that they think their children are sort of trapped in their own body. That's how a lot of parents describe um, what they think is going on with their kids. They have normal neurons. They have all the other parts of their brain are normal. They're, they're missing this one ingredient. So you think they should have the capacity for normal intelligence, it's just they can't express themselves because that's how important myelin is. This shows sort of a picture of how uh, <coughs> how much they are lacking in myelin. Myelin is normally shown on an MRI as a sort of charcoal gray substance. You can see these kind of tracks pushing through the brain. brain. This is how the brain communicates with each other. The cells of the brain have to communicate and brain communicates to the body through these myelinated fibers. Compare that to the patient with Polizius Merzbacher disease, and you can see how all these areas that normally should be charcoal gray or the sort of light gray or white appearance, and that just shows that they're really lacking myelin all throughout the brain. Now the oligodendrocyte is an attractive cell to try to think about for transplant because it's a mobile cell. During development, there's this cartoon shows in these little blue dots. They start off in a little um, focal area, and then they start to migrate out all throughout the central nervous system. That's sort of an attractive feature if you can give a little um, um, bolus of these cells. We expect them to be able to migrate out and sort of find their targets throughout the body. And there are studies we can do in animals that show that if you transplant cells into an animal brain, that they can find axons. Here's an example of an axon projecting out of the screen, and then they can cover the axons with myelin. With the clinical study that we're doing, this is in this involves injection of neural stem cells into the brain, and this shows a computer targeting program which tells us how to direct the needle into the particular part of the brain where we think the cells could have the most benefit. It's an operation that takes about two to three hours, and uh, then we're injecting these stem cells into white matter traps and then following them over time by MRI where we're going to be looking for the ability of these cells to now produce this sort of charcoal gray substance which would be an indicator that the cells are actually working. This is a uh, collaboration of UCSF and Stem Cells Inc., which is in Palo Alto, that have produced these uh, neural progenitor cells. Um, what we're, we're focusing on these patients with the fatal form of Pleasis Merzbacher disease. As I mentioned, we think that we're going to be able to use the MRI as a way to non-invasively detect whether the cells could be working. But fundamentally, this is a, a study that is designed towards safety because this is the first study of its kind that's being done. One of the primary questions is, you know, are these cells safe? How will they be tolerated by patients? And so this is a phase one safety trial that will take about five years to complete. We're at about year one to determine if these cells cause undue inflammation, if they could cause uh, brain tumors, or if there could be other risks associated with the cells. If we find a favorable safety profile, that's going to make us move into optimizing the cells and trying to have them work better for patients. So it's early days, but we are moving ahead and actually doing clinical studies in addition to all the great basic science work and the fundamental science that's needed to you know, uh, point the direction towards new, uh, 
new diseases that could be benefited by cell based therapies. So David, can you tell everybody how this might be important if you if you care about patients with multiple sclerosis and how you think about the importance of this study and thinking about MS? Sure. And there's a lot of excitement in the multiple sclerosis community uh, because the type of thing we're asking these cells to do is very similar to what a lot of MS patients need. There are many lesions, uh, in, or there, there are many um, parts of the brain in patients with MS that don't repair properly. And so that community and a lot of scientists are also interested in the possibility that this type of cell replacement could be helpful for um, promoting better repair in MS patients. So that these, uh, the information that we get from this study, the safety data, will have implications for thinking about other disorders. If we find that the cells actually work and produce myelin, I think there'll be a lot of excitement in the MS community about the possibility that similar approaches could be used in MS. Cerebral palsy is another dis disease that affects a lot of Americans uh, and also involves defects of the same cell in myelination. So there are, are, are common disorders that could uh, also uh, be thought of as benefiting from these types of approaches. Is Parkinson's related? Parkinson's is a different type of a disorder, so, so we can't go that far with this, with this type of approach. How young can you uh, determine?